all the things that he has done for me. You know, it's many things that he's done for everybody. You can't sit there and thank him for all the things that he's done for you. But uh, I was thanking him. I was telling him, so God, you know, said, there's not a lot that I gave up for you. There's not a time that I've read my Bible for you. There's not a time that I've prayed for you. There's just not enough time that I've done it. I said, Lord, that I pay more attention to watching TV or being on my phone than I do paying attention to you. Um. And it's not just us sitting and reading our Bible. It's not just us praying to Him. It's not just us meditating to Him through the day. It's the things that we do before Him. It's the things that we do above Him. And as I sat there, I weeped and I cried. Because that's not the way that I'm going to get my healing. Is to pay more attention to a phone, messenger, and Facebook, and on a TV, in a coloring book, or in reading a book that's not even the Bible. That's not even His Word. And I told Him, I said, Lord, shame on me. I said, shame on me. I said, you know what? I said, I'm sick of the phone. I'm sick of the TV. I'm sick of the coloring book. I'm sick of everything else. I said, Lord, if I want my healing so bad, I said, through this revival that you have gave many, many things to people, the Holy Ghost, and filling them, saving them, me being baptized in your name during this revival because you made it was possible, then why am I doing the things that I'm not supposed to be doing to get my healing? You know, there, there's just things that we're not supposed to do. We're not supposed to put anything above God. At all. And I'm talking more about me, you know. I'm just saying. It says in the Bible, confess your faults one to another. And I, I, everybody's sitting here saying, well, if you got the power, then you get her out of there. Well, I have the power just as well as anybody else to get my own self out of this chair. And I don't do what I'm supposed to do. Come on. And it was, it was sitting there eating at me. As that song was going on payday, it was sitting there eating at me to say this because... When you got something that says it eats at you, it needs to come out. And if it's not right, it needs to come out. If it's a man, it needs to come out. Yes. It doesn't need to. If it's a God, it needs to say it needs to come out too. But if it's a man, it needs to come out. And I just thank God for all He does for me. You know, I, I thank you for His mercy and His kindness. I thank you for for saving me, for for yes. for giving me and down in that water for Jesus' name for that liquid grave. Because without that liquid grave, I was sitting here and I, inside I felt like. The, a pain that, that I was I asked the Lord many times and I didn't put on the prayer group for us to pray of a way for me to even get down in that liquid grave because it bothered me so bad Lord. now I went down that liquid grave and I had done everything else besides putting myself on God I'm not going to get a healing like that Lord, Jesus. so y'all just continue to pray for me that I get rid of all this other junk that I'm doing and I put more time on God. Because that's what He wants. He wants more time with Him. He don't want all this other junk that we're on. He wants more time with Him. He wants more praise. He wants more glory. He wants to be glorified. Yes, He does. And when we're doing all this other stuff besides glorifying God, we're not going to get what we want. You can ask, you can seek, you can do everything else that you want to do for Him. You can ask Him a million times, but if you're not doing what you're supposed to do for God, it'll never happen. And when I say never happen, it will never happen. Because you're not glorifying God the way it needs to be done. So I just thank God for revealing that to me. Because, I, you know, I just sit there many times and I'm like, well, why am I not getting what I need? And now I know why I'm not getting what I need. So y'all just continue to pray for me that I do right. That I get rid of all this junk out of my life. And I do what God wants me to do. Amen. 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 YouTube, it's like they can't hear me because I'm so close to back there. 
instead of being where I need to be and they can't hear it. And they love the song, but they can't hear the words to it. So that's the reason why I'm not going to sing music tonight. Long years ago, when I am seen, I had no hope, no peace within, down on my knees, in agony. I prayed that Jesus and he gladly set me free. And I never said, forget the day, when all the burden from my soul was thrown away. It made me happy, glad and free. And I'll sing and shout and love is everything to me. Oh, sinner, come to Jesus now. At his feet, just humbly bow, confess to him your every sin. He'll save you, cleanse you, give you peace and joy within. And I never shall forget the day when all the burdens from my soul was thrown away. It made me happy, glad and free. And I'll sing and shout and oh, he's everything to me. Long years ago, when I was seen, I had no hope, no peace within. Down on my knees, in agony, I prayed to Jesus, and he gladly set me free. And I never shall forget the day. When all the burdens from my soul was thrown away, it made me happy, glad and free. And I'll sing and shout if all these everything to me. Oh, sinner, come to Jesus now. I hit your feet, just humbly bow. Confess to him your every sin. He'll save you, cleanse you, give you peace and joy within. And I never shall forget the day when all the burden from my soul was thrown away. It made me happy, glad and free. And I'll sing and shout it for these little things to me. Amen. That's the only thing. It's possible. That's right. That's right. Confirmation. Amen. Now who can speak to a cripple?
crumble and, and, and oh, I've never had any by your side. You've never had any by your side. Amen. 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 Sister Amber. Uh, yeah, I was reading earlier today and, uh, about vigilantly seeking Him. Uh, and you know, when they were singing that one song, uh, He suffered it all. Why would we want to vigilantly seek after somebody that suffered it all for us? He suffered it all for us. Why wouldn't we want to do that? And you know, I was thinking the opposite or, or the enemy or, or whatever you want to say of, of vigilantly, vigilance is slothfulness. You know, I was reading today uh, several chapters in Proverbs, and slothfulness is all through it. God don't want us to be lazy. Amen. I said it here before. It's work. Amen. You got to work. You can't be lazy at it. Amen. You can't. It's not a lazy way. If it, if, if you think you're going to come to Jesus, it's going to be a lazy way. You're. You're. It's not. You got to work at it. He don't want us to be slothful. He wants right. us to diligently seek Him. And I feel like diligently seeking something, you're gonna you're gonna study it out. You're gonna try to figure. You're gonna try to know what you're seeking. I mean, you're seeking something, so you got to figure out who Jesus is. Right. And in order to figure it out, you got to read His Word because His Word wow. is Him. So That's right. In order to to, to get closer to something, you gotta you gotta know something. Wow. You know, you gotta get a relationship relationship with yes. Him. Yeah. If you know it, carnally, if you are dating someone or something, you're going to try to figure out more and more and more and more you can about that person because you want to know who you're dealing with. That's right. We need to know who Jesus is and who we're dealing with and how powerful He really is. And, you know, I was thinking today, and I know this might sound silly to some, but some preacher was here and he was talking about, I don't remember what guy it was. I think it was one of the... P guys named Paul or Peter, one of them, but about how he he uh, praised he praised God like seven times a day, just just all throughout the day he, he praised him. And you know, I, I, that came to my mind today while I was I had my mom's little baby Bella that I brought here a couple of times, and all I was doing is I was at the counter and I was measuring out her baby formula, and I was just making her bottle, and my hand was just doing this, is all it was doing. And I said, thank you, Jesus. You know, some people's hand can't even do that, but mine can, you know, and I just, and then I walked over, and I got more excited because I walked from my kitchen to my couch to change her diaper, and I'm going to say, because I could walk from my kitchen to my couch and change her. Some people can't. Some people can't walk. Some people can't move their arms. Right. Some people don't even have the mind capability to do that kind of stuff. You know, to measure out that formula. Some people don't. They can't read to know how much. And that's just, I know, like I said, it might not mean much to some, but that just, it just blessed me to, to just, because sometimes I'll take the little things. The fact that I could, it's not that saying it's little, but the fact that I can walk. Sometimes I take that for granted because I just get up and it happens. You know, sometimes I take for granted that I can move my arm. Sometimes I take that for granted because it just happens. You know, like the old saying is, you don't know what you have until it's gone. Until it's gone. You know, and that's just every anything. You don't know how precious just being able to raise your arm is until you can't raise it anymore. That's right. You know, you don't know how precious it is to walk until you can't do it anymore. And I'm thankful for what God has done for me. And, you know, I've heard it all my life to give to give flowers while people are so are a living and and uh, Sister Lily back there, you just bless my heart. I just love it when you get up here and sing. You remind me so much of my late grandma uh, Phyllis. I never did hear her sing, but you just have the sweetest little humble spirit about you, and it just blesses my heart. And I just wanted to tell you that because. Well, you should give the flowers while people are still here, you know. I just wanted you to do that.
without him, we'd be doing real good. Because we can't. We can't, I can't take this step to my seat without Jesus wanting me to. That's if right. he don't want me to, I ain't going to. You know, because he has power over everything. That's he right. has power over my legs. If he didn't want me to move from this spot right here, I ain't moving from this spot right here. That's right. And that's the same way it was within the body of the, the church itself. We need to realize that if, if all, all, her, all her body goes together. You know, so I can't go over there and my arms stay over here. That's, that's right. not how it works. So that's we all right. have to go. We have to go together. And once you get together, that's when real things happen. That's right. That's when things start happening. When when you realize you got to have unity and you got to have Jesus. Amen. Once you have those two things, well, it's something. It's something. That's what could happen. That's right. Once you have that, there ain't nothing that's impossible because there ain't nothing that's impossible for Jesus. That's right. Jesus said there is nothing that's impossible for him. Things might be impossible for men, but Jesus can do all things. That's right. And once we really, really come to that realization of just how powerful he is and what he can do, and that we need him, we're going to be doing real good. That's right. Amen. We need him. I want to sit right here for just a minute and just let you know that you know we're all here in this building we all have different personalities and we don't some of us are really really shy I was really really shy when I first started out serving the Lord and worn out singing I would be man fearing so bad that I couldn't get up and sing I would lose I would lose the memory of my song that's how fearful I was but and in God, sometimes He tells us to do stuff here in this church. And many, many times, I'm really, I'm so guilty. Last night I was guilty. I should have got up and sung the song that God laid on my heart, but I didn't do it. See, we, so every time we come to the house of God, we miss that opportunity that God lays on our heart to do. And, and every time, I mean, this altar here, I, I thank God for this altar. I've learned to come here more and more. And every time I come here and pray, I find out when I go home of a day, what I prayed and talked to God about, He helped me through that situation throughout the day. And, and I, I learned, and, and Brother Bowman was talking last night, he can remember when all the saints were gathered around the altars that you couldn't even get to. When I was growing up, that's how it was. I, I remember as a child, I was in the back of there. If I was going to pray, I would be in the aisles praying because everybody crowded this place and could not find a room to get yes. up to go pray. And, and, and what I'm kind of getting at is obedience to the Lord because God speaks to just, it's just sometimes we have to learn how it works and how it yes. operates. Yes. And I want to be sensitive to the Spirit, and sometimes I'm not so sensitive. We all do it. We all do, but we feel God. And I feel so awful when I go home. You get a whip when you go home and you don't obey God. But I, lo I love you tonight. I want you to feel, you know, nobody in here is going to hurt me. Nobody's going to hurt you. That's right. And if yes. God just, if, if it's just five or six words God gives you to say, that is meaningful to somebody. Because it will help somebody. And I, I remember Brother Paul, I used to come here to church, and I would be over there sitting. I mostly sit over there for some reason, I don't know why. Because now I see all the men over here, you know, I don't see, why was I over there? But anyway, he just said hallelujah one night, and the Spirit of God just fell down upon that place. It's sometimes just one word you may say that moves the Spirit of God that sweeps through this place. I, it's really quiet here tonight, but you know what? God so see when it's quiet. Yes. And, and He's precious here to us tonight. If we could just learn to obey the Spirit of the Lord. And I, 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 I would ask for your prayers from myself because I disobey God a lot of times. I always sit back and say somebody else can do that. So I'm waiting on somebody else to do it. Or, you know, we have enough there or we have enough here or whatever it might be. Yes. Um, but I want to listen to what the voice of the Lord is. Nine times out of ten, you know how it is. A preacher will get up and say what you want to, what God laid on your heart to say. And but that sometimes gives you confirmation in what He was going to preach on that was beneficial to help you. And I just love the Lord tonight. There's nothing to be afraid of. If you want to get up and say something for God, be the be free. Like He said last night, we we're in a cage, but we don't know that we're free. 
but we want we want to be free. But it seems like he said last night that thing, that chain and that weight on that bird, he couldn't get loose because he was chained up and went around and around and around. Sometimes that seems like how we are. We're not free in God's spirit that gives us. And a message one time they preached on grave clothes. God, do I still have my grave clothes on? I'm not free. Loose me and let me go free. Because we got to be free in the be be obedient to God. Yes. And it, this is just not here in this house. I'm talking about when we go out here, and uh -huh. I'm starting to, when I pull up to a gas station or if I hear somebody yeah. like, by, by the, get, going to get my food or something, God, let me say something to this person as I go by. Don't let me waste another minute because we are so close. I mean, time's running out for us. If we're, all, if we're going to do and put on our record, we better be getting it down on our record. Yes. And, and uh, I don't care because it, it may, and they are starved to hear that from us. They, they it would perk their whole day up probably if we just said something about God to them, to help them to know, hey, somebody talked to me about God today. But and so if we could just learn, Lord, I want to learn to speak out to people because I'm a really backward person, but I know God's in me. You know, while He lives in me, and I'm not getting out. Of it. He said, "What's good is something. If God gives you something, what good is it if you don't give it away? You've got to give it away. Don't keep it to yourself. I don't care what you have. Some kind of gifts you have, you have love in your heart. Give that love out to others because that's why He give it to us. I love the Lord, and I appreciate Him. Thank you." Okay. Some people just judge people because of what they're hearing them say. But you know what? You've mentioned it, and I'm going to read it. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. Don't roll your eyes. Don't, don't murmur. Don't complain. Mm -hmm. Don't make fun of them. That's right. Pray for them. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Yes. That ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yes. And there is nothing wrong with your confessing your faults. There is nothing wrong with doing it at all. We all fail and we all let down God. I'm looking up to the people who are still have to be working through all this. I'm blessed. I got yeah. kids who stay in bed until my feet hit the floor. And then they're checking in. Well, have you read? Have you prayed? Is it safe? <laughs> you know, I've, I've stood back there before Checked your and confessed my thoughts before about how, you know what, I was built on the right foundation, but somewhere I had a leak inside my house. And it completely rotted out my bathroom floor. And I had to take the whole thing out and get it all out and fix it. It had to be fixed. I was built on the wrong, right foundation. There was nothing wrong with my house. But there was something wrong on the inside yeah. that had to come out come and be fixed. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with standing up and saying that sort That's of stuff. Right. There's nothing because it says right here in the Word to do it. Yeah. Do it. Amen. <laughs> But this one is definitely, I believe, an A. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so it's just kind of sloppy and like that. <laughs> <laughs> they can't slap me for it. They can't slap me for it. <laughs>
brother and sister here. Do y'all stay with testify on what to do? 